Hello and welcome to Friendship Today. I'm AJ Bibbs. And I'm Jared Hernandez. Our show is dedicated to telling the stories that are Friendship High School. Are you interested in learning how to design your own video game? Well, this class will teach you the process of how to make one. I've always had an interest in how video games are made and I thought it would be an interesting and fun class to try out. Like of the year or just of the semester? I decided to take this class because it's a very interesting subject to me. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't really know much about it when I first started. Um, I had to do a lot of YouTube tutorials, um, but I think it's fun. I think it gives those kids an idea who play video games what goes into creating a video game. There's a lot of work. Um, I think this is a good class for students who just want to learn the beginning of game design. Um, it's a good beginner's course. It piques your interest. Um, it's a lot of drag and drop, so as long as you can connect the puzzle pieces together, then I think it's really good. And then if you really, really like it, then that kind of gives you your next step as to what you want to do. So you can take a deeper dive into coding or something like that. Do you like staying healthy? Do you ever feel afraid of what the nurses do? If so, then watch this video of what our nurses do at our school. This can provide you the confidence to visit them when you're in need of medical assistance. Well, we are promoting the flu vaccine here in the building for staff and their family members. Um, they will be able to come on September 30th to our office and get the flu vaccine provided by United. Um, always, always when we're dealing with somebody that's contagious is good hand washing. Um, we can mask up if we need to, um, but just cleaning and um, hand washing and gloving up as needed during the flu season is the best way to take care of that. Um, they'll be aching, um, they will have high fever. Um, sometimes with flu B, you're gonna see stomach bug symptoms, so vomiting and diarrhea. Um, I assess them, I take their temperature, um, I kind of question them on what's been going on and how long, and then if needed, I call the parent to pick them up. Um, we're having a flu shot clinic for our staff, and we encourage our students to get their flu shots. Um, we encourage hand washing, and we want everybody to not share drinks, don't be passing your phone around, and try to minimize germ transfer as much as possible. Um, depending on their symptoms, um, we usually isolate them in a room until their parent can come get them. Um, we, you know, we frequently, frequently wash our hands um, during flu season, and um, yeah, I don't know. We isolate them till they go home. Um, they will have a high fever. Their eyes will be red and glassy from the fever. Um, coughing, sneezing, um, headache. Um, we check them out. Um, we see first if they're running fever. Um, we look at their throat to see if their throat is red and rashy. Um, it's sometimes accompanied by body aches. Their skin color. Um, there's a multitude of things that you look at because everyone is different. Well, as far as teachers are concerned, we just had our flu clinic last week. And with students, just as they come in and visit with me, we talk about good hand washing and just taking precautions like that. Lots of hand washing. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have to be up close and personal with students when we're taking temperatures and visiting with students. So it's just a lot of hand washing. It's typically really high fever, body aches, chills, Sometimes sore throats, not always, but it's more just your body aches and high fever symptoms. That is different for everybody because I've had some that didn't even have a fever and they tested positive for flu. So, but it's typically 102 or higher that we see when the kids do have a fever. We typically call the parent and have them go home and go get tested because you have to go get swabbed it's a swab up your nose that they do to check for the flu, and we highly recommend parents to take the student to get checked. So, so we, we were, were walking, walking to school. school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom pat me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind pizza. wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another hope bad I don't day. I really have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. 
This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Have you ever wondered what it takes to be a cop or what they must do to protect us? If you are interested, then go listen to Officer Ingram, one of our freshest policemen, as he talks about his job. My name is uh, Officer Sean Ingram. My nickname is Groot. I was uh, at the SO, the Sheriff's Office, for seven years. I was on SWAT for the last three years, SWAT and Warrants Division. Ever since I was a little man, I always wanted to be a cop. Ever since I was a small boy, man, just always watch cops and just look like something I wanted to do. I've been in lots of pursuits. I've been in lots of foot pursuits. I actually hurt myself last November running through a fence chasing a guy. I have 13 screws in my shoulder from that little episode, but you know, I've, I've seen a lot of craziness. I was the uh, primary breacher for the SWAT team, so I did a lot of training and teaching on breaching doors and how to get into places. Broken many of fights up, been in many of fights. You know, it's you know, in, in the cop world, that's not the what you want to do. You don't want to just automatically want to be in fights. You want to, you you know, your your number one tool that you have is your voice and your ability to de-escalate situations. So. You know, like I said, I've been in a lot of fights, but I've also de-escalated a lot. I want to keep doing this until I can anymore. You know, this has always been a dream of mine, and it took me a long time and a lot of uh, time and effort to get to where I'm at. Are you curious to what you need to do during a fire? Listen to this video where you will learn about drills and fire safety. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? A fire has been reported in the building. A fire has been reported in the building. Please proceed to the stairways and exit the building. Do not use the elevators. Hi, I'm Aaron from the FMS broadcast team and I'll be reporting on the safety drills we have set in place this year. First, we'll be talking to Ms. Therese about why these drills are so important and how they keep us safe. Well, you know, school safety is really the most paramount thing that we do. And above everything else, it's we have to make sure that we practice the way we play. And in the event that there's an actual situation where we have to do uh, one of the things that we do these drills, we want to make sure that our students know what they're doing, our teachers know what they're doing, all of our staff, so that way we can uh, make it go as smooth as possible. About how long should each of these drills take? It really, it depends on the drill. Um, w uh, the shortest amount of time possible, you know, to get to what happens. Uh, we did a fire drill just the other day, last week. Uh, we had the entire bil building evacuated and all the students accounted for in about four minutes. Um, I'd like to get that down to about three minutes if we can. Um, it shouldn't take us any longer than that to, to get it done. Um, and then like when we do lockdowns and stuff like that, it should be instantaneous. How many drills do we have every year? Okay, so, um, you know, we'll do drills for evacuations, uh, fire drills, stuff like that, uh, weather-related drills, so if we have to move away from our exterior do doors due to weather, uh, you know, the high-level lockdown stuff, um, holds, things of that nature. What is the goal for all of this? You know, our, our number one goal above everything else is the safety and well-being of the students and staff here at FMS. That's, that's really our first priority above everything. Now you know why these drills are so important and why they all keep us safe. Sometimes the things we do or say can make others feel hurt, excluded, or isolated. Everything you say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. You can achieve a lot using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision. Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Invent. You got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. 
If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. Hey, let's check out this park. To find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Being a cheerleader is very important as they cheer for the sports team while they are playing. Here is Mrs. Solomon with info about the team. things that I really wanted to be involved um, with student organization and it just worked out that it was something that I was used to and that I've done before and I just have true passion for it and also tradition and just knowing that it's something that I can get back to the school. Each routine is completely different. Um, some of them we can pick up some stuff from past routines or over camp, um, but really it's everything is different. Homecoming takes a little bit longer because we use all three squads, um, and then our other routines we do JV and varsity, so it's a little bit different because you're taking away some people and adding some people, um, but we sometimes have to turn around a routine within two weeks, um, and that's crazy. That's crazy to put together as much as we do, um, but we try to work it all out. We have after hours practices, we have crazy amount of hours that we put in, so it really just depends on the routine. Our, actually, our next big project is UIL, the state cheer championship. We're going to start that as soon as the senior pep rally is over. We start running into our UIL cheer competition. That's not until January like 15th or 16th. Um, but we're going to hit the ground running on that. We're really excited uh, to go back and hopefully take that state title. Love fantasy and role playing? Then this is the game for you. Mr. Cortez tells you about D&D and the program here with it. My name is Joshua Cortez. Well, it was, uh, I've been playing with some uh, people that I went to school with. Um, and then I started teaching my son. And I started thinking about the social aspects and all the positive that you can get from this game. And I thought I'd bring it to friendship and help teach some people and help them get them out of their shells or whatever the case may be. Okay, so at the moment, right now, we're meeting uh, Thursdays, 401 to about 530 in room 12010, or 1210. So, no, no standards are needed to join the club. Um, if you've ever been interested or you just want to come and get a fill of things, you can, you know, you're more than welcome to come in. Uh, we're, I mean, we're just going to have a combination of beginners, people that are advanced, and we're going to, once everyone's attending, everyone that's going to be there, we're going to, we'll divide and see who's going to take control of what, or who's, who's going to be the DM and stuff like that, so. Not many people know this about me, but I actually used to, I used to write scripts with me and my, uh, my ex-roommate, and we actually have one that's circulating around California right now, which is pretty cool but I just love the combination of storytelling, um, music, just it all coming together and you, you be just being creative and being using theater of the mind. I, to be honest, I thought that only maybe I'd have like three or four students, but I feel like it's going to get much higher than that. And so we're gonna definitely need some help. So if you would like to help, please come down here. I don't know, I mean, if you're interested and you want to give it a shot, it's always interest you, for whatever reason, it's just, you just come on in and we'll set you up and we'll teach you the mechanics of the game. Um, you don't need to bring anything, just your mind and we'll have fun once we get things rolling. we believe in the friendship way. Dr. Seuss once said, teeth are always in style. 
We greet and welcome people with a smile. We say please and thank you with a smile. Connect with others. Listen carefully. Ask questions. Care about others by listening and engaging in conversations. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Talk to people the way you want to be talked to. At Friendship, we are sincere, considerate, and respectful. We go the extra mile to help people in need. Wherever you turn, you can find someone who needs you. Remember, you don't live in a world of your own. To encourage someone means you give him or her the courage or confidence to do something. It is like when my teacher tells me to do my best. We speak enthusiastically and inspire others. The Friendship Way is our standard. It is the collective community of students and teachers whose character is seen as the ordinary. The Friendship Way is seen in every kind of student, every awesome teacher, and every nice gesture. It's our culture. It's our behavior. It is the lens that we look through to serve. I already knew that I was going to go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely want to major in political science. After that, I'm going to get my law degree. Then I'm going to come back to Detroit, boost the economy, become the mayor or something, try to make the situation better for other people. I feel like I owe it to the city. I'm determined. It's, it, it's going to happen. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend. Do you want to retire like a champ? Just like legendary basketball star Uncle Drew? Don't do it like that, Uncle Drew! You're already acing the game. You've got your dream ride. Don't be slamming my door. Sorry about that. Uh, you just did the nah, same. Gotta get the boys. Your dream vacation and your dream team. And now you can make your retirement just as legendary. I get buckets. Get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Interesting about the history surrounding Vietnam and the war between them and the U.S.? Listen to Coach Allen talk about his class about the war. I just want to educate them on all uh, the sides of the war. I don't really want them to think anything. I want them to draw their own conclusions about how we wage the war, how uh, the Vietnamese wage the war, and you know, um, kind of just come out thinking about how our government works. So uh, no really agenda. I want the you know, big thing is to, is to teach the students to think. So, so far we've covered uh, just some geography of Vietnam, uh, the history of Vietnam, French colonialism. We've talked about um, Vietnamese independence from the French, and we're just now getting to the war. Uh, so we've had the split between North and South Vietnam and uh, President Diem uh, assassination and Kennedy's assassination. So we're getting into the meat right now. feel pretty good. I kind of was surprised. I, I thought I was going to end up teaching maybe a section each semester and then uh, got my class schedule and saw that I was teaching three. So that was kind of a shock. So I'm just kind of surprised and happy that a lot of people are interested in taking it. And, you know, like I said, the big goal is just to uh, 
hopefully the students get something out of this and kind of learn how to think critically about history. I'm glad, I'm glad the administration, Mr. Hernandez, uh, Mr. Martinez, Mr. Sims, Mr. Thompson, Ms. Reese, they uh, had faith in me to do this and allowed me a little bit of freedom to teach something that's kind of outside the box. So I'm very thankful for that opportunity. Want to have experience working with the engines and the other mechanics inside your car? Automotive is a good class for that, and here's Mr. Vincent to talk about it. Friendship, just because I was uh, retiring essentially and uh, was browsing through the want ads, believe it or not. Just got on the Friendship website one day and saw that they were hiring for an auto tech teacher and decided, well, I've got enough experience, I'll, I'll apply for it. Basically what I do is I take guys that are going to be looking for this as a career and take them start them at square one. A lot of guys come into this program not knowing anything about vehicles and by the time they graduate they're ready for an entry level service technician position. They, uh, they come out with a fundamental knowledge of all the operating systems on a vehicle. Uh, a lot of them will uh, take the opportunity to take the ASC student certification exams and a lot of them end up passing them. That gives them some industry certifications that are, even though they're at a student level, whenever they go to apply for those first couple of jobs in the industry, it looks good to the employer who sits there and sees, okay, well, he knows what he's talking about, knows what he's doing here, here, and here. And it'll, it'll help give them the edge over, over the other people. There. A lot of them are donations. Others are live vehicles that we are repairing for teachers, staff, administrators, community members. It's an industry that needs people. We're sitting on an average annually of about 55,000 technicians short across the nation. So we're looking for looking for people that are that possess the want to to be able to take over that job and start to make a good career. Be prepared for hard work. Be prepared for a lot of studying, a lot of learning, and do not be scared to get dirty. It's taught me a lot of patience. It's taught me a lot of patience because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm used to teaching and training adults. So since I teach and train adult, taught and trained adults for so long, that I unfortunately came in with a, a lot of ideas that a lot of people were going to get it real quick, and it just ends up not being the case. So I have to like step back a little bit and realize that, hey, this guy hasn't been doing this for 15 years, so now I've got to break it down even farther and explain it step by step. Whether you need a hand shopping for groceries, using up scraps, or finishing every bite, Meal Prep Mate can help you plan better and save more. Whether you're a newbie getting your first taste, a meal prepper honing your chops, or a meal prep pro hungry for a challenge, you can learn how to eat smarter, plan better, and save more at every step of meal prep. When you finish every bite, you save. Start prepping with Meal Prep Mate at savethefood.com. This could be real. It's coming! Run! In a world where we watch natural disaster movies instead of preparing for them, a natural disaster could be coming soon to a town near you. So, before you watch another movie trailer, or dresser how-to, or quiche cooking show, or whatever, take a minute and build something that matters. Click below to build a natural disaster plan for your family.
feeling creative, want to make good looking decorations and have fun while doing them, the ceramics is for you. Here's a video about the class. Uh, ceramics is a class here at the high school that deals with clay, uh, and we either do hand building stuff, or we work on the wheel, or a combination of both. I have been teaching ceramics at the high school here for, this is my 19th year, and I've uh, been involved in ceramics for probably about 25 years. Um, when I was in college, uh, I was a jewelry and metalsmithing major, and one of the classes I had to take was a ceramics class. Uh, in that class, teaching, or being in that class, inspired me to enjoy taking ceramics and teaching ceramics. Ceramics is a fun class to take. Uh, it's, it's, it's a different pace. You kind of get to do your own thing. Uh, it's kind of low tech a lot of the times and uh, you can just kind of come out, chill out, do some work and uh, enjoy some, some uh, time inside your head making a fun thing that's going to last for thousands of years. Uh, we do a lot of different things in the class. Some of the best projects are, uh, we have a chair project from the beginning kids. That uh, It's really amazing. I've had more students win awards and competitions with that project than anything else. Uh, but it's also really fun to watch kids throw on a potter's wheel and make really pretty amazing things that they didn't think they could do. Uh, after school, sometimes the studio is open and kids can come in and they can bring in their friends and they can work on the potter's wheel. Uh, we might do a, a clay club later on in the semester where, uh, or an after school throwing session where kids can come in and throw on the potter's wheel. But right now, uh, it's still being uh, worked on. Uh, to take my class, you have to first take Art 1 um, or a dual credit art appreciation. And then that is your prerequisite to all the advanced classes in the school, including the Thanks for watching the show today. If you have any story ideas, we'd love to hear about it. So please contact us by email or give us a call. We will see you on the next edition of Friendship Today. Bring it. Bye guys. You guys need a ride? Sure. Oh, yeah. All right. Have us some one on one. Uh, I gotta go eat, man. Sorry. I'll, I'll see you later. Friendship TV.